finding the right foster family. Next to the deepening mystery of two little boys who vanished from their own backyard in a small California town. Hey, good morning, Sergeant Pear. I uh, really appreciate you joining me this morning. We just got word that the Bakersfield Police Department is now taking over the case regarding the disappearance of three-year-old Orson West and four-year-old Orson West. Can you just kind of uh, confirm that and give me the circumstances surrounding that? Good morning, Bayan. Uh, yes, the, the Bakersfield Police Department is now the lead or primary investigative agency into the disappearance of Orrin and Orson. Uh, what that means is that the Bakersfield Police Department, although we've been involved in the investigation uh, since the very beginning, uh, is now the primary agency for investigative strategies, compiling of information, conducting uh, interviews, and processing the case with the, the goal of finding the boys. Uh, we will still work closely with uh, California City Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigations to bring our boys home. Okay, and, and uh, that is uh, certainly news to me. I, I uh, guess my first question is in previous cases that you and I both are on, um, whenever there's a jurisdiction switch in terms of a department taking over, there's new knowledge about something occurring within that jurisdiction. Is that the matter here as well? Well, it's a combination of factors. Uh, there is information that is known to investigators, uh, but unfortunately, and although I realize that the public and the nation is invested in this case, you have two sweet little boys that nobody uh, knows where they are. And, and I would like to be able to tell you, but I can't. And uh, you know, as well as I do, that it's not just the public that are watching this. It's if there are people involved in this, then they're also paying attention to it as well. And so I can't release specific details. Uh, what I can say is that although we've been involved in it from the very beginning, uh, there's a historical nexus to Bakersfield. Uh, the little boys are from Bakersfield. Both their biological and adoptive families are from Bakersfield. Uh, and so it just makes sense that if most of the investigations and interviews and historical information that go into this type of investigation occurred in Bakersfield, that we're going to assume the, the, the jurisdiction for investigating it. Got it. And I know that you said there's a lot of things about the investigation you can't talk about, but let me just try to get a few things off the checklist. These boys were reported missing on December 21st, 2020 in California City. That's 70, 80, 90 miles east of Bakersfield. Um, if they disappeared over there, I know you said that there is, uh, you know, relations between Bakersfield and the boys because they used to live here. Um, but why is BPD taking over disappearance to happen in a whole nother city? Well, also what we can do, so besides the fact that uh, the historical information uh, points to all of the relationships for the boys being in Bakersfield, California City has run a concurrent investigation as well. Uh, the Bakersfield Police Department is the next largest uh, municipal police force. We have resources that we can bring to bear. Uh, the California City Police Department has done a thorough and amazing investigation, and we are going to give it a fresh set of eyes and look at the facts and circumstances. As you reported in the past, we've, we've been in California City, although uh, it's a little bit of a drive. It's in the same county, uh, and we've been invested in it due to the familial ties as well as the history of the boys in Bakersfield. Got it. Um, so uh, right off the bat, I mean, this might be an obvious question, um, but, you know, the very first thing that the Cal City Police Chief said was, look, we, we believe foul play was involved. Those boys didn't walk out by themselves. Now you guys are lead investigators. If I ask some of these basic questions, forgive me, but um, foul play is involved in the eyes of BPD, correct? Uh, all facts and circumstances. So we don't operate off of hunches, innuendo, or rumor. Everything that we believe has to be based on fact. Uh, we would be remiss in our job if we didn't consider that as a possibility. However, we're going to let the investigation play out and the facts speak for themselves. Uh, we will look at both the uh, possibility that, of an abduction or foul play, as we term, because foul play is ultimately a very loose term that can cover a wide range of circumstances or a, a, a missing situation. I guess what I'm wondering is, 
how much personnel do you guys have dedicated to this case every single day? Uh, since the beginning, we've had uh, multiple detectives uh, assigned to this. Uh, we've been working around the clock processing tips. As, as you are aware, numerous tips have come in because people care and we care. And, and we feel that stress uh, to bring these boys home uh, and to find the truth of the matter. Uh, and so we have allocated significant resources, both in personnel and man hours, and we will continue to. Uh, to this point, we've you know, executed over 20 search warrants as a supporting law enforcement uh, agency. And, and we'll continue to put manpower uh, and process information and look for these boys 24-7. Uh, we need to find them uh, and we need to find out what happened. Any suspects named in the case, persons of interest or uh, anybody questioned on behalf of the Bakersfield Police Department? So I, I have a, a problem with the term of identifying uh, suspects because like I said before, we, we process the information. So in the beginning, in, as in any case, everyone's suspect. Uh, you look at the neighbors, you look at the neighborhood, you look through travelers, you look through registered sex offenders, you look through family members. And, and so we're going to not narrow our focus on any particular individual or individuals and look at the circumstances that surround it and let the case and the facts speak for themselves. Uh, and as the investigation goes on, I'm, I'm optimistic that more information will be available to the community because they're emotionally invested. Uh, as you've seen by the searches uh, that have been orchestrated by the public, uh, by the, uh, you know, just the attention that the media, rightfully so, has paid to this case. We know people care uh, and, and we care. And so we're going to do everything in our power uh, and we won't stop until we find out what happened. Got it. Okay. So uh, essentially uh, there's no one right now named or detained or arrested by the Bakersfield police department, right? That is correct. Okay. Um, but just to be clear, you know, you talk about narrowing the search and having the have an open mind really in an investigation that, you know, uh, is dealing with two precious little boys here, right? Uh, children. Um, but it's been over two months since these kids went missing, I would imagine, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if it started with a huge, you know, world of trying to figure out what happened, do you guys have more of an idea of what direction you guys are going in in this investigation? We definitely have investigative paths that we're going to take. Uh, you know, one thing that we would like is if anybody had contact with the little boys, uh, over the course of the last year, regardless of the context, whether it was a doctor's visit, on a playground, saw them at the grocery store, we would appreciate a call to the secret witness number. Uh, that's at 322-4040. Uh, and give us just kind of the interaction. We, we're interested in those historical facts. And, and that's part of the compiling of information. Uh, it's not just during the the narrowing it down to the time of the disappearance, but we want to look at uh, past behaviors. Got it. And from your guys' uh, investigation so far, because it's not like you guys are just all of a sudden picking it up. You guys have been on it since pretty much day one or day two, right? From, from the beginning is what I'm trying to say. We've, um, we've, we've participated since day one, yes. Got it. Um, to your department, um, when was the last time the boys were seen according to what you guys are able to compile? Well, they were reported missing on the 21st. And that's the last uh, statement that we have that they were seen. When was the last time that you guys know of somebody saw the kids besides the adoptive parents? And, and so we're starting to get into details that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to protect. And, and it's not because we like keeping secrets, but we have to protect the integrity of the investigation. So we're not going to give out witness statements. We're not going to give out uh, statements made by people that we've contacted at all, uh, because we do not want to close doors in anything, uh, even though we may take a beating. Uh, you know, the, the perception in today's age, day and age is if you don't talk about what you're doing, you're probably not doing anything, right? 
Unfortunately, that is not the case, but we can't talk about what we're doing because our goal is to bring these boys home and find out what happened. And, and to release information that is extremely specific like that could jeopardize that. Not, I'm not willing to do that. I don't think you're, you want to do that. And I know the, the investigators uh, don't want that to happen and the people that care about the boys, which is the community. Certainly. I, I want to go back to the roles you were talking about. Um, and I know you have to jump out of here in a second because um, you have something else right now. But um, what role does CCPD now play in this investigation and how do they assist with the FBI in terms of, uh, you know, fact finding, et cetera? There, there's been dialogue throughout this. So what we know, CCPD uh, knows, what CCPD knows, we know. Uh, and, and so we'll continue that relationship. Uh, of course, you know, because uh, certain facets of this uh, are involved in California City, we'll still rely on them. Uh, however, uh, at this point, uh, the information clearinghouse, so to speak, is, is going to be the Bakersfield Police Department as far as the primary investigation. Okay, and I, I want to be really fair in my questions too, but I, I, I kind of just a few last couple ones here. Um, does the Bakersfield Police Department believe a crime was committed in California City or in the Bakersfield jurisdiction? We're exploring all possibilities. Okay. Um, and then this, uh, you know, taking over the investigation, you guys are now the lead investigators. Was this a, a, a gradual type of decision that ultimately led to the press release today? Or was there something that happened overnight, for example, that you guys said now we're the lead investigators? No, I think it was definitely uh, as, as the investigation progressed, it, it, it made more sense for the Bakersfield Police Department to come to the forefront. Okay, I got it. So it wasn't like some, a major break in the case happened in the last 24 hours or something like that, right? Uh, not that uh, I know of, no. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything I didn't ask um, that you want the public to know about your guys' involvement now or just the case uh, in general? I, I, it, it's important that anybody that has information uh, about the little boys, no matter how old or how recent, uh, contacts us. We want to know it. Uh, we've received, as you can imagine, hundreds upon hundreds of tips, uh, and we explore all of them uh, because we want to know the history of the boys. We want to know the people involved in their lives. Uh, if you saw some something suspicious in any of the communities as far as uh, people in, involving juveniles, uh, let us know, because we're going to take all of those facts and, and get to the truth of the matter. And, and uh, a lot of this is through the community's interaction with law enforcement, and, and we rely on that, and that's part of our job. Last question. Um, in the investigation that you guys have conducted, um, has it led you guys to believe this is more of a kidnapping, uh, you know, or, or homicide type of case? We're, we're looking at all possibilities, Brian, and I'm, I'm not going to get into specific about theories uh, because investigations are still occurring. But uh, nothing uh, is out of the realm of possibility that we are not willing to explore. Got it. All right, Sergeant Perry, I really appreciate you joining me this morning. All right. Talk to you later.